people. Are you excited? Yeah, yeah I think we will look forward to following training. So let's introduce the Foundation Executive Chance Guard Diamond Director Bob Lee and the First Guard Diamond Director William Tao. specific way of uh, dedicating um, what you do every day and what I do every day. That way we don't fight, right? Yeah. Because there's a lot of husband and wife team here in, in the audience. Show me the hands if you and your husband is in the business. Oh, that's quite a lot. Wow, wow. Quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah. And sometimes that's pretty hard, isn't it? So. The best way to do it is use your strength. Use each other's strength instead of the weaknesses. We all have our weakness. Yeah. So focus on each other's strength. So for Mary, she's very good at strategies. Yeah. She's the strategies man, strategies lady. So she does a lot of the strategies, a lot of the communication, a lot of the connecting with the team. And I do a lot of trainings, the motivation. And a lot of the follow-ups as well. Yeah. I think that's the reason that made you perfect couple. Oh, thank you kindly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So my second Mentor. question for William is, as I know that Mentor. you Mentor. were very successful already before you joined Usana. So uh, can you share the audience what is your big why? That's a very good question. Actually, that's the most frequently asked question that I ever get. 
right? Because um, before Yushana, I actually started my own business in China. I had my own online sort of touring you know, website, and also, also I do it offline there as well. So the reason why I try to actually you know, start Yushana is that, you know, throughout my journey, you know, I was in university, I, like I was the honor student, I did all tried to my PhD, but I couldn't see myself, you know, wearing a lab coat. I couldn't see myself just, like following someone's shoe. And also on the market now these days, it's so hard with all the competitions, all the finances, all the recruitment, you know, human resources. And I found myself stuck in the middle of the nowhere, sort of. I couldn't see myself in a 5 year sign, I couldn't see myself in a 10 year sign. And I, and I don't even know like, when I'm going tomorrow. Right? How many of you have that feeling, that insecurity? I think most of you will have that insecurity feeling, right? Once you're in a corporate or even you start your own small business, right? So that's sort of where I was standing before USANA. But, you know, throughout the USANA journey, I saw leaders, I seen leaders, you know, being successful. I seen leaders, you know, you know, because uh, I was in the Asian Pacific when I was 15, I think. So 15 years old, right? Over my body is here, my heart is not here. Do you understand? Because my parents dragged me, right? My friends dragged me. So, but however, because uh, I was raised up, I was raised up, I was fermented in USANA. Right, fermented meaning like getting spoiled uh, and, and having a great like, aftertaste. I was fermented in USANA. And I saw those leaders, you know, throughout their journey, they become happier, they become richer, and they have a better lifestyle. So, uh, and, and that I, I asked myself, what kind of platform provide all those necessities? What kind of platform provide all those sort of, you know, utilities for someone to be successful? And I couldn't think about the second company, that's Yushana. So that's a simple way, you know, that's how I started Yushana, right? Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Wow, we believe in amazing training. Okay, let's welcome Bob and William. Thank you, thank you, Lynn. thank you. All right, guys, we're going to be very relaxed today. So uh, please feel relaxed. Please feel this is at home, and your friends, Will and Bob, will just share some of our experience with you. Is that okay? Yeah. Say yes! Yes! Okay, well, we're gonna sit down, because we are a little bit tired. Yeah. <laughs> so hot outside, right? So, Bob. Well, so today we're gonna talk about, you know, how to build a customer base, right? Um, yeah, Bob, do you remember the first words you told me about, you know, the secret of USANA? Don't make me sound like an old man. <laughs> so Bob over here is like the modern version of Confucius. There were no Confucius, right? He speaks many words of the, you know, the wisdom, right? So over here, actually, you know, Bob told me the formula to success in USANA when I first saw it. Everyone got the pens and the papers out? The, 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 the actual secret of USANA, the formula of USANA is first, you need to be an expert in the product in sales. You need to be the expert in sales. Does that, does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. But does that sound interesting to you guys? No. But the second part is second, we are creating a network, a massive network of sales. So a network of sales has two meanings. First of all is we are creating a channel, a massive channel of volumes, right? The second is within these channels, we see leaders. We found leaders, we create leaders. We create team members, we create core team members, which we can expand on that network of sales. So think about you, Sean, like, isn't those two things we are doing every single day? Be an expert of sales and try to create a team of experts in sales regions, right? So, I, I, I mean, at first it sounds very intriguing, but you know, it didn't, reach, didn't make much sense to me. So, Bob over there actually, you know, introduced a book to me. It's called The Psychology of Selling by Brian Tracy. Has anyone read his book? Oh wow, awesome, awesome. To this day, I still have the recordings in my car. Every time I'm on, on a road trip or I'm on a highway, right, I pop the CD in, I listen to the recordings from Brian Tracy, and that keeps my mind and my spirit sharp and ready. Right? Okay, so... Yeah, that's, that's excellent, Will. That's well done. <laughs> yeah. 
Does everyone feel Will is a good looking guy? Yeah. Only the first three lines. <laughs> the first three lines, you see my eyes, right? <laughs> yeah. I can tell you, Will is a very, very young and dynamic leader. After he joined his uh, family's business, their business has actually more than doubled and tripled in the past five years. And last year, the family have gone into the uh, made it to the Fortune 25. And and yeah, and we we, we went to Sabi Sabi together. Yeah, we touched. Yes, yes, yes. So let's give Will a huge hand. Yeah. So Will, um, you you are you know very young uh, millennial leader. Um, what? What do you think? The, how, how is the market changing? Well, that's a very good question. There's right now the Gen Y, the Gen Z, right? People born in the 80s, 90s, all those to the 2000s. We actually contribute a quarter of the populations. A quarter of populations. And be, as we become richer, as we, become, you know, as we earn more money, we actually have more purchasing power. So right now, we're actually, the people who are spending more money is not you know, the baby boomer anymore. But our generations, right? We don't save, we have no savings. We have credit cards, right? Everything is out of window, right? So, uh, so yeah, so I mean, we need to see this difference. You, we need to see the most important demographics, right? Um, as, you know, as a marketing strategy, we need to change to the new landscapes. So there are actually three areas that we need to change. First landscape changing is that, you know, now these days, you know, younger generation, we spend a tremendous of time, you know, watching viral videos online, right? How many of us have heard of an app called TikTok? TikTok? Uh, in Chinese, it's called Douyin. Oh, there you go, <laughs> see everyone nodding, right? So, it's simply a little app, right? You can, you, you can post like five seconds, 10 second videos, on that app, and people will, yes, will, will give you like, right? They can subscribe you and things like that. It's very simple, it's very simple. In the app, it has all those different music, different filters, you can do all those editing, right? And it is viral in Asia, especially in China, it's very viral. So in China, it's like how we can integrate our sort of, you know, our, our idea, you know, our branding through all this, you know, new technology, and to compose them into the social media that we you know, use every single day today, right? But the thing is, it needs to be interesting. It needs to be interesting, it needs to be eye-catching, right? So second, right, the second thing we need to do is events. Events is great, events is awesome. But however, those events, right, it has to be sort of, sort of Facebook or social media friendable, right? All those events need to create an atmosphere or a culture where we can share the experience, share the feeling of experience online. So, I mean, the true events, I mean, some events is great, it's awesome, right? It's, it's definitely one of the best events I ever had, I ever attend, right? Um, and, and the key idea is how these events can really help us to configure our, our potentials online. I mean, that's the main idea. And the last part, as not least, right, is the influencer marketing. Right? People need to feel and to see the product before they want to buy the product. Right? Need to see and to feel the product. So how do we combine those three areas right, to the new landscapes? That's a question. So people, I, I can you start your, you know, your massive business right here in Singapore around 15 years ago, yes. right? Um, um, you know, between now and, and, and then, you know, what are some changes, especially what are some you know, customer buying methods that is changing? Yeah, I still remember when I first came to Singapore, when I was prospecting, looking for strangers on Orchard Road. I used to have my million dollar bag. Yeah, who, who had a million dollar bag? I had one. Yeah, you guys all young people, you don't know million dollar bag. <laughs> because nowadays we all use technology, isn't it? Yeah, we don't need to carry all those stuff. So we used to have like, you know, five kilo bags. You know, inside we have all the doctor wins, you know, the, 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 the vision, all the product booklets. Yeah, so, so that was, you know, 15 years ago. But nowadays, the way customers are buying are changing, are changing. I'm sure everyone heard of Amazon. Yes, who has heard of Amazon? Yamashi. You may 
Amazon.com. Yeah? Yes or no? Yes, Russ. Fantastic. Thank you, thank you. Who has purchased on Amazon before? One too many. Wow, wow, wow. I love investing. I'm sure a lot of you invest as well. And when you look at the Amazon's stock price, what's the stock price for Amazon today? Who knows? Check your phone. Check the stock app. Yeah, it's 1,624 US dollars per share. That's Amazon.com. I want to ask the audience, does Amazon make money? Who thinks Amazon makes money? Who thinks Amazon doesn't make money? <laughs> uh, if you are a businessman, if they don't make money, they will go bankrupt business. Amazon only started to make money in the past probably two to three years. Very small margins. But why Amazon share price is so high, isn't it? Because investors, they buy the future of a company. They invest in the potential of a company. Do you agree? Yeah. Yes. So the investors, they saw the potential of Amazon. Last year, this time, Amazon stocks was around $900 per share. So now, it's nearly doubled. So is the Usana shares. How much is Usana shares now? 120 US dollars, isn't it? Who has Susana stocks? Who buy Susana stocks? I see Darling wanting the first day. Wow, very good. <laughs> Who want to buy Susana stocks? Wow. We all want to buy, but we always miss sales. <laughs> so the key to success is take action, isn't it? Take action. I'm not telling you to buy stocks, it's not why I'm here, but what I'm telling you is the trend of the future is changing. And the way customers are purchasing is changing. I've got a cat at home. She always scratches everything. So my wife just got some new furniture, and my crap, my cat loves it. <laughs> I went to the pet store to buy a scratching purse for my cat. Right? It's about hundred fifty dollars. But when I check on Amazon.com, do you know how much for the same scratching post? 70 Australian dollars. Literally half the price in the store. Would you buy at the store or would you buy online? Online, of course. And now Amazon has this special function called one-click purchase. Have you tried that? What it is is they will link your credit card in their file. You press one click, straight away, send to your home. Your money's gone. Yeah, money's finished. They sign you up already. Imagine you can sign up your customers on Usana website with one click. They cannot regret. <laughs> yeah, so what I'm telling you is the market's changing. So like the, uh, the gentleman that came today that spoke about the digital leaders. Yeah, how was that? Awesome. It was fantastic, right? Yes, that is the future. That's the future, that's very correct. I mean, I'll throw a few more, you know, Bob. Uh, especially in the Asian regions, we have the Alibaba Group, right? Taobao, uh, we have you know, Jindong, right? we have Uber Eats. I, I, I just realized that, you know, Uber in Singapore is no more. I just realized that. Because I eat, got taken out by the other bigger company called the Grab, I think, right? Because I, I opened my Uber app, he says, your area is no longer available. I was like, what? <laughs> but however, you know, Uber Eats is pretty, you know, big in, in Australia, also in the US. It, it's, it's like, you know, home delivery systems. You can deliver it around, in any way around you, in any restaurant around you, you can pick up the fruit and bring it to you. And actually, it's cheaper to deliver than to eat at the store, right? Also in China, we call it Ulamon, right? Ulamon. So, I mean, the key idea is that the customers now is changing. So uh, now consumers actually trust their peers over ads, right? It's not about word of mouth, and also it's all about search engines. So those are two sort of the most influential sort of tools that consumers actually use.
use to, to beat the decision making process, right? So I mean, the, the, the idea is that, you know, uh, we need to really see, the, understand the, the value of this sort of, we call the review system. The review system. So for example, if today I want to go to a restaurant, I will go to Yelp, I will go to, I think, uh, Zomato, I will go to Da Zhong Bian Ping. I will go online to search for the restaurant with you know, my price points, also with the higher reviews, right? Especially on like on eBay or on Amazon or on say on, on, on Taobao, although there are so many products with safe with similar sort of you know usability and effects, but the price are different. Right? They are higher price and lower price. But the first thing I see is the reviews. So most of the time I buy stuff with higher reviews, also the higher price. Right? Because I trust the reviews. So the key of this in USANA is we need to build our testimonies. So testimony is the review systems in USANA, right? It's not just your review, it's your peers' review. So your team's testimonies. And I do think testimony is not just like, you know, I tried USANA, you, you, you saw something, it's great, now I'm all healthy and, and again. Um, I think testimony consists of three parts. It has three components. First of all is you need to, you know, really dig down and to tell other people your situation before you met USANA. Highlight, you know, highlight one incident that happened to you and that which made you to rethink your life choices. To maybe, you know, to rethink your life choices. You need to dig hard and you need to dig near deep, right? And second is who, why, and how you made Usana. The why is very important because the reason why you joined Usana is 80% you know, your associates will join Usana. Because the friends or the peers around you will sort of have a similar lifestyle, right? We'll, we'll, have, we'll have the same, you know, dem dem demographics and age group as you. So your why is very important. So before you do anything, before you do the presentation, you need to really, you know, pull out your, your, your testimonies. So at the very end is, your, your last session of the testimony you need to consist your future in Usana, your goals, your plan in Usana, has anyone get asked by that question, how much do you earn? You want to talk about dreams, you want to talk about goals, but how much do you earn? We, we're like, we all get that, right? How, how, how much do you earn? You see the value, it's not like such a great company, such a great business, but how much do you earn? So we actually get really afraid of people asking how much do I earn, right? Who gets afraid? Right? That's awesome. Um, so before actually people ask that question, Speak your testimonies. Tell them your dreams, tell them your goals. So that actually stops them to ask you that question of how much you earn. And then you can what? And then you can start your present presentations of have a freedom, that's very important. And also we, we also need to enable consumers, right, to lead their own journeys. Right? Have you ever heard of a brand called Xiaomi? Xiaomi the Mi brand, M-I? No? So Xiaomi is a Chinese-based company. Uh, right now, its main market is in India and in South Africa, right? In five years' time, Xiaomi sales surpasses Apple. So it surpassed Apple about four years ago. So right now, Xiaomi has you know, more sales more than their Samsung and Apple. It's a very small company. It's a very small company. So the key to Xiaomi's success is, you know, our, you know, our handsets, our phones, we have interfaces, right? All those interfaces, uh, from Xiaomi is actually gathered from the feedback of customers. But a customer takes on the decision making of Xiaomi of whether this app is appropriate in the next update. And that really gains attention of the consumers because consumers can now be involved into the decision making of a company and they become fans. They become hardcore fans of this company. So what I try to do in USANA is create those hardcore fans. We have a tool in USANA called the True Health Assessment. Is that correct? Do we utilize this a lot? Not really, right? That's the only tool in USANA right now we can really interact with our consumers, right? The consumer can actually be a part of the decision-making process, right? Clicking their health status, clicking, you know, whether they want to be healthy or really, really healthy, or they, you know, athletes or just, you know, no, no normal person. Right? They, they, they can actually choose. The consumer has the ability to choose. 
And right now we all you know, need that sort of the involvement of a company so we can affect the company. Right? So, I mean, Bob, do you think do you think in the world right now, in Usana right now, there will be always more customers than associates? Yes, we will, yes, we will. Um, I think I want to share with um, everyone the uh, the 8020 rule. And the 8020 rule, I mean goes applies to a lot of things. But in this area, I'm sure that you all heard of there's 80% of the customers in the market, and there is only 20% of leaders who want to build a business. Is that true? That's right. There's always going to be more customers, right? That's right. Do you agree? Yes. Say yes. Yes. Fantastic. I just want to make sure you're awake. Yeah. And I want to ask the audience, which one is more important? Is it the customers more important? Or is it finding the business builders more important? Show me your hands if you think the customers are more important. Okay, very good, very good. Hi, 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 as I can see, very good. Good, 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 about 30% of the room. Show me your hands if you think finding business builders are more important in Yusan. Business builders. Okay, very good, about another 30%. So how about, I don't know. I'm not sure, right? Okay, I'm not sure. Yeah, lady there is good. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. In the beginning of my Yusana journey, probably the first five years, I've been always been looking at business builders. So I've been always been searching people that want to make money, people that want to change their life. So that was the, the people I was searching for. And then I realized the whole market there's actually more customers than business builders. So the best way to do your salary is just bring in as much people as you can. Okay guys? Yeah. Bring in as much volume as you can. Don't worry what his background is. Don't worry whether he can do a presentation like Will. You know, it doesn't matter. Just bring them into your sauna first. Let them try the product first. You know, put them on the PC first. Because for the Chinese market, many of us always join with free PC, right? Who joined with free PC? Wow. wow. So not just the Chinese market. Also my oh, Philippine friends is in the front, yeah. Everyone free PC, right? But actually, the PC is pretty good for getting customers in. Because it's a much simpler process. Just like the one click on Amazon. We want to make things easier for you. And what we can do is we can filter from all these customers. We only need one to two good leaders, right? How many, how many legs in your business? Show me your fingers. How many? How many? Two? Are you sure? I saw someone go three, four, five, five, like that. <laughs> Yes, two. You only got one left leg and one right leg. Imagine out of all your customers, there are two gentlemen that change their minds. I did a degree in law and marketing. This gentleman here did a degree in microbiology. Dr. Wentz. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine two of us, we kind of enjoy Usana and want to join your organization after trying the products. Do you want me to join your organization? Yes. Yeah. You want Will to join your other leg? Yes. That's it. You only need to find one Bob and one Will. Okay. <laughs> you can go home and watch the TV. <laughs> no. You still need to build more legs, right? Yes. Yeah. How? By looking for more customers. And then shifting them to business builders. Okay, guys? You got that? Fantastic. All right, my friend Will, please tell me, what do you think is the value of Yusan? Because you're such a young leader, you're very dynamic, you know, you, you, the growth has been, been just exponentially growth. What do you think the value of Yusan for you? Well, um, the value of everything and anything consists of three models, right? There's the core value, 
there's the actual value, and there's the augmented value. Uh, has anyone done marketing before? I did, so, uh, so we have the, you know, with the three model values. So for consumers in USADA, they're all, all they see is the core value, which is the, you know, the benefit of the products. But, you know, the idea of it is that, you know, we have you know, the pool, a massive pool of loyal customers. And in those, you know, in those big pool, you try to find the right people. And you try to sort of make them to see the actual and the augmented value, which is the lifestyle, the freedom, the security, and the platform to grow. The reason why I joined Usana was for the platform. Right? So at the end of the, at the, end of the day, uh, we are understanding that finding the right people. So what is the right people? Can you tell someone, you know, in the crowd, he's the right people or she's the right people? Can you? We can't, right? But there are four types of people, right, in the Yushana business. One is they have really, really good attitude. They are humble, they are keen to learn, they are always at some other meetings, right, right? And they also have great abilities, presenting, right, prospecting. They are, they are, they are, they are born to be MLL leaders, right? But there are also people who have great attitude, but they have very little skills. They're probably fresh graduate from college, right? Or they have no sort of sales, you know, any you know, network marketing, you know, experience before. But they have great attitude. They always show up. They always are really engaging, right? The third kind of people is those they have great abilities. They have great, you know, background, you know, you know, experiences. But however, they never show up. They're not very engaging. They always say no to you when you want to the, to the meetings, over they already is a part of a team, right? We, we, we have so many of those people in our team, right? Uh, this is our potential leader, but however, he's busy. He's always busy. <laughs> and, and the third is those people, very sadly, has no attitude and no abilities, <laughs> right? They have a really big mouth. So the key to find the right people is to seek the two types. The type which has attitudes. Attitude always go before abilities. Finding the people with the right attitude, and that's your right people. And that's your right people. Yes, 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 yes. We made a really good point on that. I remember my mentor told me that, you know, Bob, if you really want to do, you know, well in the Usana business, attitude is everything. Do you agree? Yes. Yes. So every day we need to be in your peak state being positive and, and, you know, and really setting the right goals so that, that will move you forward. Yeah, so, so Will, um, can you tell us some about uh, personal branding? Because branding is so important these days. Like McDonald's, like, like my, my daughter, she recognized all the, the, the branding. And she goes, Dad, I want to go to McDonald's. I said, no, Dr. West don't like that. You know? <laughs> Choose Susanna, you know. <laughs> Choose the healthy stuff. Yeah, so, so, so kids, um, they, they have branding and they, they look at the Apple logo, you know. So, so how do you, because how do you brand ourselves? That's a very good question, Bob. Uh, actually, I actually heard a story in Brian Tracy's was her trainings, right? Um, um, in the story, Brian Tracy told us a story of a young man came up to him. He told Brian, hey, Brian, I picked I, I all your trainings. I tried all your method. You know, I did all your skills. Now, however, my sales are not that great. I'm doing very poorly in, 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 in my your sort of work, right? And then Brian told him, hey buddy, just cut your hair. So, so the, the boy actually, you know, the gentleman actually had a long ponytail. Right? Although he's tall, he's very handsome, like, you know, like Bob, right? Very handsome. He's tall, but however, his hair wasn't, you know, didn't let the image of him as being a very trustworthy person, you know, sometimes, you know, that, you know, that's a thing, right? So, that person actually, you know, rock up to Brian Tracy's meeting you know, one year later, and the first thing he told Brian is, Brian, thank you so much, you changed my life. Your one little advice has tripled my income, just by cutting down my hair. I mean, <laughs> what was I looking at? What's going on here? What's going on here? Right? So, I mean, the key, I mean, the key to actually for the self-branding is to build trust. At the end of the day, it's to build trust. Um, if you see someone that you trust, obviously, you know, the, 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 the things they say, right, their lifestyle, right, is, is those sort of 
a guideline that you sort of appreciate. So we understand, you know, for young people, we like to drink, we like to party, right? <laughs> right? We like, we, like, we like to hit the pubs. But would those sort of image align with you online and offline? Is that image aligned with trust? If in your social media every now and then, on every Friday and every Saturday, you you have a bunch of people that you know drinking beer or going to the club, is that a line of what you're saying? Of you know we are we are the healthiest family on earth. You know we're going to change your life. That's not the line of your image. Your image is formed and structured piece by piece. Right, so it's very important, right, to build those trust, to build those trust. You know, today, you know, Eric was saying that, you know, he, you know, he has a book called, you know, Whatever Happened in Vegas Stays on YouTube, right? Although, you know, although, for, for example, your Facebook or, or, or your WeChat or, or, or your, you know, your social media don't post those sort of pictures, your friends will. Your friends will and they will tag you, right? So, for younger generation, your image is just to sort of behave yourself, <laughs> right? Behave yourself. Every time you want to do something, think about it. Am I the healthiest family on earth? Am I the image of your son, right? Yes, yes, yes. I think Will uh, has made a great point on that. Because there are so many young people on the audience, right? Show me your hands if you are, you are young. Wow. Yes. Oh, spiritually young. Very good, very good. Yeah, I'm approaching 40s, oh. but I feel like I'm millennial. Oh. Yeah, because I hang around with the millennial. You see, you do 1,000 push-ups. Mm. I can't do that. I'll do 300. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just kidding, just kidding. Yeah. So yeah, so Bob, um, you know, we're talking about you know teens. We're talking ourselves. You know, what's the advice about building a successful sales team? Yes, yes. Thank you, Will. Um, I think everyone here, we want to build a successful sales team, right? Do you agree? Yes. yes, and the number one tip I can share with you, I want to share three tips with you, so please write them down. The number one tip for building a sales team is professional image. It's called professional image. I was very fortunate to be the only associate in USANA that was 10 years ago to have a chance to attend the first ever leadership pilot course oh, wow. in network marketing in the uh, Melbourne Monash University. There's only 10 people, and nine of them are ladies. I was the only man. The alpha male. Yeah, the alpha male. You can see that in this industry, the female dominate the male. That's right. So all the males in the room, we have to step up, right? <laughs> Say yes! Yes! Wow, feel the masculine power. Yes, <laughs> yes. so um, the, the first lesson we had was professional image. And the lecture, when she came into the room, she dressed impeccably. I mean, just spot on. She was in her mid-40s. She didn't have LPs or Hermes or Chanel's. She didn't have that. But she had the right suit, the right color combinations. So for men, the right type of color, the right tie, and the right and the right accessories are very important. I want to ask the ladies in the room, which part of a man's dress? This is my model. Please stand up my model. Yeah, let's give well a hand. Come on, guys. If you look at this gentleman here, which part do you think is very important? The ladies, okay? Not the men. All right. Do you think is the hair is the most important? Show me your hands if you think it's the hair. Okay? Maybe 10%. The cleanness of the face. 48. Okay? 30%. Okay. Uh, 30%. The color of the suit matching the tie and the shirt. So the color combination. We got another 30%. 
the shoes. Alright, another 30 percent Okay, great. Thank you, we can sit down now. You have all lied. The ladies have lied, okay? Because our lecture told us she's a specialist in professional image. She said, ladies always look at the shoes of a man. Do you agree, ladies? Yes. And men always don't clean their shoes. Do you agree? Especially with their white sneakers. Yeah, white sneakers. And before that lesson, I have shoes but not polished. Not always polished. That's why you, when you go to the army, you realize all the, the soldiers, their shoes are like a mirror, right? That's very important. Very, very important. And for the ladies, what do you think? What do you think the men look at? Yeah. I want to I wanna ask the men. Guys, what do you think the most important part on the women? Is it the hair? Their face? Their body shape? The body shape had to do with this. Yeah? I asked the men. The ladies said, yeah, body shape, yeah, yeah, yeah. Body shape. No lie. We said you. Yeah. She didn't say a particular area, but the lady told us that, our lecture told us that. For ladies, don't wear too much fancy stuff. Especially nothing sexy. <laughs> that is very, very important. Because we want to look professional. And professional sometimes has to be a little bit conservative. You will realize how Donald Trump's wife dress, how President Xi Jinping's wife dress. Yeah, that is the way you have to dress. Do you want to look like that? Xi Jinping's wife. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean that, that posture, right? Yeah. Is that professional? That's for professional image. She didn't wear LV, you know, on the front. Or Chanel. <laughs> she didn't wear. Yeah. I'm just kidding. So professional image. The second one is professional knowledge is very important. To when you face a customer, you need to be very professional. So before you see a customer, you need to know everything about your customer. And please buy the book by Harvey Maikai. Yeah. Has anyone heard of Harvey Maikai? Oh, dear. Only one or two gentlemen there. Yeah, he's an old guy, but he's so good. He's the master in relationship building. Yeah. There's a book on Maikai 99. So basically what Make A99 is, before I see a new customer, I need to fill out the 99 questions on this customer. Yeah. What does he like? What color clothes does he like? What drink does he like? What is his favorite hobby? How many children does he like? What, 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 what field of work does he work at? Yeah. What's his past experience? You see what I mean? Don't just rock up and then just present anything. You won't get successful. Has to be fully, fully prepared. Do you agree, guys? Fantastic. And the third one is consistent online and offline training. Who has online training for the team? Show me your hands. Online training. Very good. Who has offline training for the team? Offline. Very good. Who has both? Very good, very good guys. Who thinks online is more important than offline? Who just rely on online training? Just online. Because I found, I was speaking with Will, and Will was mentioning to me that a lot of the millennial leaders, they use online as their primary training source. Do you agree? That is wrong. That is wrong. Offline is so important. 
for the past 16 years, me and my Mary. We want to train somebody, I have to be there for him. That is called coaching. Do you think online I can coach him? Only on a certain level you can. But not on a deep level, you cannot. So online only can complement offline. Therefore, offline is much important than online. And today, I'm, I'm sure we all heard that Eric, the, the, uh, the digital leader guy, he said that, quoted, technology cannot replace face-to-face -face communication. That's right. Do you agree? Yes. Yeah, that's the digital guy. He said that. So if you want to build somebody, you know, in your area, see him. Call him every day. Yeah, follow up every day. Yeah, go to the market every day. Be with them every day. That is the best way to, to build a sales force. That's very correct, Bob. Uh, I mean, online and offline, there needs to be a combination. So, uh, before they were saying that it's O to O, online to offline, right? Right now, the word has changed. It's O M O. Online emerges with offline. Your online training can be very basic. But Yushana is all about warmth. To build a network marketing, we need to have a warm heart, a warm company, and a warm team. Right? Only offline can bring that sort of relationship close. So offline trainings is definitely, definitely very critical. If you don't have one, or you are not spending a lot of time, if you spend most of the time online, right, you, will, you will see your team member come and go. They will come and they will go. Because at the end of the day, USANA is not a fast track to make money. USANA is for long term. For USANA is for long term. USANA is like a security is for long term. So you need to have those warm, those connections, those relationships, right? So in, in terms of our I mean, our meetings, right, and, and our events, you know, our events need to be some more. We we need to have those empathy. All the events we host. Right, you know, home parties, business meeting, health and freedom. You, my, my friend, you need to love it. If you don't love it, something is going wrong. Because your associates, your team members, or your, you know, your preferred customers, or your potential customers, is probably is there because of you. If you don't like what you're doing, no one's gonna like what you're doing. So you have to create those atmosphere that you like. Right? So that's a, that's a key idea. I mean... Yeah, Will, exactly. You have to create the empathy. I mean, I know you've got some secret tips when you go see a customer. He does some special rituals, you know, before you see a customer. And um, he was sharing with me, and I thought that was really good for him to share with everyone. Do you want to know how Will... What, what the rituals he do before he sees a customer? <laughs> yeah, you want to know that? Yeah, and um, so let's see your hands. Come on. I mean, wow. clapping, clapping. Woo! Use clapping. Well, yeah. Please, well, share some of your rituals before oh. you see a customer. So we can wrap this up. Yes. Oh, well, well, to, well, today, you know, you know, when I'm on the taxi, because there's no Uber, right? I'm on taxi. Uh, you know, normally when you first met someone, you need to break the ice, right? What kind of topics do you guys talk about? The politics, the sport, right? What are you talking about? You, you know what? Your belief does not align with other people's belief. So if you talk about politics, if you talk about sport, if you talk about you know, you know, what's going on in the fashion world, or what's going on you know, in the city, that, but that belief might not align with the, the, the person you're talking to. But one thing is all common is the weather. Today I woke up to the taxi and I'm like, wow, it's raining, it's pouring, right? I was, I was I said to the driver, wow, well, that must be good business for taxis. The driver said, what? No, it's not. That's a, that's a sign for me to introduce myself. Just two minutes ride, I have all his, you know, details and stuff, right? Just two minutes ride. Maybe tomorrow I'll give you a call, I'll send me an email, and you know what? My next associate in Singapore. Always break the ice with the weather, you can't go wrong. Right? And 
you know, uh, to increase sign-ups, I have you know, three really, really quick tips. First is, you know, when in a conversation or when in a presentation, the idea is to involve, not to inform. The idea is to transfer your passion, not to inform other people about what you sign up. Transform your passion. Right? Uh, does anyone do morning exercise, a morning cardio in the morning, give it a run? You know, that's my sort of, my day. I start with a morning cardio, because I need to be ready mentally and physically, right? So I need to be pumped in the morning, and I always arrive around 10 minutes you know, early before all my interviews, all my appointments. I will spend five minutes in my car, or in the men's room, right? for, for you guys, maybe for the, in the ladies' room, right? I spend five minutes. I look into the mirror and see that person. Right? I see you know, that person, is he, is he dressed well? Is he tied down now? Right? Does he have anything on, on the teeth? Is the breath smells good? Hair okay? And I tell that person, hey, today you are great. Today you are great. Now let's get ready. Right? A little pet talk. That, well, that's what I do. And, and, and the second thing is, during the presentation, um, I, I try to connect with customers' problems or their goals. The whole health and freedom is about resolving someone's problem, financial problem or health problem. But the, but the key is if you are trying to find the right people, you need to align with their goal. Your whole health and freedom needs to dig deep and dig hard for them to really tell you the actual goal. I mean, not like buying a Ferrari or buying a mansion. It's, that's not a goal, that's a dream. A goal is something they wanted to be achieved in five years' time. Something you know, short term, not just long, just short term. Five years' time. Five years' time, you sign up and change a person's life, right? So, yeah. And the last but not least is referrals. Referrals, referrals, referrals. Always ask for referrals. Right? If that person says yes, if that person says yes, great. His referral or her referral will be the pleasant place of this. If that person says no, don't worry about it. You have now expanded your customer's contact list, right? Um, you know, I have a little, you know, little activity I want everyone to be uh, engaging, right? Okay, yeah. um, some, something ritual that I do, you know, before, before I actually meet my, meet my appointment. Can everyone close their eyes? Everyone close their eyes. Okay, right. Everyone close their eyes. So imagine yourself, you are going to your next, right? Your next big meeting or your next appointment with a potential customer or potential associate. Right? Your next key leader in your group. Right? See yourself in that mirror. See yourself in that mirror. Take a deep breath. Say the words with me. I am the greatest. I am the best presenter in USANA. Take another deep breath. Now open your eyes. Now open your eyes. Look, look around you. Did you see, you know, the changes of the facial impressions? Do you see the confidence building up? I want every time you met a new person or you met anyone on the street to have that confidence, to have that, you know, that passion to transfer that passion. I mean, thank you for everybody to be here today. I mean, thank you all for for, for all those help and also for your wisdom. Thank you, everyone.